Okay, so I um, was looking around for video on one of my finds that I got at the auction, and I thought that I was making video of my investigation of the problems with our the hot vac, but apparently I wasn't, or I've lost them, or whatever. But I have <clears throat> refurbished this guy, um, which I got uh, with all of that other crap that is waiting to be videoed. And I'm going to do a little explanation on, on uh, what was wrong with this and how I've gone about um, doing something to fix it. So um, that's what this video is about. And essentially it is um, how does a vacuum pump work? And what kind of longevity can you expect out of um, rubber materials? So, yeah, that's what we're going to do tonight. So, I picked up this hot, uh, hot vac, the Ungar portable desoldering system at the auction when I got a bunch of other equipment, including like signal generators and sweep generators and... Um, some power supplies and I got the um, I got the microscope when I was at the auction as well as um, the uh, <clears throat> yeah the uh, the, the uh, um, robot arm anyways this was one of the things that this guy had accumulated over his um, many years of life and um, had um, sitting there and when I when I got it home I mean yeah it it powered up fine the um the so let me back up a bit a desoldering station if you haven't seen one before has a uh, has a nozzle that is <clears throat> that is a um well it's a nozzle so it fits over top of things and it also has um a suction so that you can um, suck solder once you've uh, melted it. So this nozzle gets heated. You put it over top of something that you want to desolder, and you suck up the solder. It's like having one of these desoldering pumps, except it works single-handedly. Yes, you can get up there. It's like having a desoldering pump except it works single-handedly and it's got a heated tip. So it's all integrated into, into one thing. So when I, when I got it, it um, the, the tip heats, but the pump wasn't working. So I had to figure out what was going wrong with the pump. And so what I'll do is I'll, I'll pop back in this um, diaphragm. And the problem was that the rubber had gotten so stiff from age because of off-gassing of the volatile components in rubber that make it flexible and it had started to turn um, from rubber into some plasticized um, uh, polymer so that it lost its flexibility and the pump motor could no longer overcome the, um, with that, the, the bulk modulus of the material since it had become too stiff. So um, I'll pop that in to the, into the motor and show you what it was doing. And then also we'll see how I overcame that little problem and fabric cobbled up a replacement diaphragm. To get in, it's fairly straightforward. These four feet come off, and then the case just slips off, and you're in. So on the inside, it's pretty simple. You've got a motor um, that runs a pump. The, the motor is actuated by this switch. The heating is done using an SCR, um, and then this potentiometer adjusts the duty cycle of that SCR. So you're not, you don't have any feedback. 
the there's only three wires going to your going to your handle and one of them is for power and then there's a switch and then there's a ground so power and ground for the heating element and then there's a switching element that is a, a switch that is available to turn the pump on and off pretty straightforward there's not much going on here electronically but there is this pump and what was happening was it wasn't starting up so um, as you can see if we plug it in and turn it on you get a pump that runs and and is blowing air out at a fairly significant pace and has some suction. And I'll show you in a second what it was doing before, which was not that. So here's the motor, and essentially what we've got it was, is we've got a eccentric that runs and moves the pump up and down. So that is the, the basis. And so in, inside of here is a couple of valves and it uses gravity to close um, one. It's just a straightforward flapper pump and I'll open up to show you what goes on inside. But you basically have um, a flap, two flaps that sit down. So in the gravity neutral position, it is drawing in air, but when it starts to compress, it pushes one of the valves up and closes it, opens the other valve, and that allows a um, egress of air from the uh, from the chamber. So, just a simple flapper valve. Okay, so now we've got the um, the mounting holes off, and we can take a closer look at what um, actually goes on in the pump. So, what we have is two cavities. A cavity on the left, which is the exhaust cavity, and a cavity on, well, an exhaust cavity and an intake cavity. So notice that there's a little um, depression there. There's a little depression there. That is the exhaust cavity. That is the intake cavity. And then underneath, we have this um, diaphragm that moves up and down. So imagine that's closed. So it this diaphragm moves up and down and it increases and decreases the volume that is underneath here. So you've got this here above it and then you've got this um, this uh, plunger that either decreases the cavity or increases the, uh, the size of the cavity. So when it pushes up it um, creates a, uh, a small space and when it pulls down, it creates some space in here. So when you push it down, it forces air out. When you pull it in, it wants to pull air in. And we've got these two holes, and that's what forms the pumping action. So when you reduce the volume, you're trying to push air out in both directions. And that's where the valves come in. The valves are situated like this. So when you're reducing the volume in the cavity below, you're pushing air up. So what will happen is you will get air flowing into both of these cavities. And uh, notice what happens. Oops, I got those backwards. Uh, no, nope, I have those right. And notice what happens when you, when you do that. So if you're reducing the cavity volume, you're pushing air out. That means air is going to try and come out both of these holes. Remember, there's these two holes. They're coming out here. So air is going to try and come out of both of those holes. Um, so, yes. Air is going to try and come out both of those holes. This valve here is floating in space, but this is flat here. So it, when this valve gets air pressure underneath it, it will tend to close that 
um, valve, that hole there. So when air tries to enter into this cavity, it will close off this valve. And that means that um, if air can escape, it will, and it'll escape through here. So when the volume of air in here is being reduced and air is being forced through these two holes, what will happen is that this valve will close. You're not forcing air out this way, but you're forcing air out this way, which is the exhaust valve. Now, conversely, when you open up or you try and suck air out by pulling this valve down and increasing the volume here, it will draw air in, and that means it will try and suck air in. But if it tries to suck air in, this valve, in addition to gravity, will get closed because, well, I mean, it, it gets closed because of gravity, plus air trying to flow through there will hit it and close it. But we've got an open hole here, so it'll try and suck air out. So air will come through here. This valve will get forced down because air is trying to come in here, and then it will um, get sucked through that hole. So it's a simple, it's a simple two valve system. So on the upstroke, we are forcing air out of that vent. And on the downstroke, we're pulling air in through that vent. And that's, that's how the pump works. Now, what wasn't working was the, um, the fact that this was not um, compliant enough to allow the motor to overcome the force that was needed to pull this up and down. And I'll swap this back in and I'll show you what it was doing. You could kind of get it to work, but it wouldn't work reliably. Whoop. Which was a, I mean, every once in a while it would start up, but it wouldn't, like I said, work reliably. So we'll put this um, valve system in here. And then we'll plop this guy back on, and then we'll start it up, and I'll show you what it was, what it was behaving like when I got it. Okay, so that's got the um, the original uh, pump element in there, and so we'll turn this on, and and you can see that it it tries to turn, but it doesn't have enough force to overcome the um, but you can get it to go if you give it some impetus and it's got some momentum in its rotation but it doesn't have enough um, torque to overcome the um, static uh, the, the initial static, um, well, sorry, it doesn't have enough torque um, when the motor starts up in order to um, pull the plunger down. But once it's got some angular momentum established in the motor, then it has the enough torque, uh, well, it, then it can generate enough force in order to pull it down. But it doesn't have enough, it doesn't have enough starting torque in order to effect that. But, but if you give it some initial um, spins, it will start up. So, what did I do? Well, that's what we'll cover in the rest. So while the hot vac was hotting, it wasn't vacuuming. And the reason, near as I can figure, is the age of this rubber gasket here is um, it's at its end of end of life because it's too uh, stiff um, rubbers get stiff as they age so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and cut out the uh, the bellows part of this thing and glue um, some inner tube onto it cut it to um, cut it to dimension and see if we can re, um, well, put a new bellows in there. So apparently it's too much to ask for that to be um, 
like a standard 632 or something like that. Um, it's got some weird thread pitch on it, so I'm going to have to dig around for something. <laughs> Very hard to read, but it's metric. And that looks pretty close in terms of length. So now I just have to figure out a way of embedding it into a stack of stuff that I'm going to glue together. Okay, so that seems like a good fit. And then when it plops onto there, it should uh, that should give some clamping force. And if I need to shim it up just a bit, yeah, well, we'll see. I might need to put some sort of a, a shim around there in order to <clears throat> make sure that there's enough clamping force to make a tight seal. Okay, so using that as a template, we can core out a, uh, a centerpiece. Why didn't I think of this? I can just um, cut that to length and then glue this guy in there. Um, I need a valve stem. So, off with its head, screw it into there, and we've got a rude facsimile. So let's see if we can get the uh, pump to run. Okay, so we've got her um, stuffed in there, and it looks like it's spinning. So let's uh, let's power it up and see what we got. Okay, so it's uh, powering up. It looks like, and let's hit the switch. Oh, look at that! And it even produced a suction. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, just refine the uh, the connection there, and I think we should be good to go. To uh, get good adhesion with um, rubber cement, it's mandatory to get rid of the oxidation layer that forms, or else you will not get a uh, reliable bond. Any. Um, contact rubber cement will work but this stuff comes in a patch kit for bike tires so and it's in small tubes and it, if it dries out well just throw it away so yeah it's nice <laughs> Wait until the. Uh, the symphony number three by Ludwig von Beethoven is erupt Wait until the um, this rubber cement is um, dried, and well, I won't say tacky, but um, uh, so that it doesn't stick to paper. So, a little less than tacky, uh, and then yeah, put the two pieces together, and now I've got a, a sub more substantial um, lip as a clamping surface and it also sort of sits a little better, so it'll be easier to assemble. Now, next up is just to put a little epoxy in there um, to form a bit of a seal. I put, some, I chased some threads into that so that that um, M3 sits uh, in there nice, threads in there nice, and uh, yeah, I think that is pretty much it. So there it is, fits pretty nice in there. Um, it is, uh, much more compliant than the uh, than this one is. This one is very stiff, and this one just moves along quite nicely. Now we just clamp her in there and see what kind of structure we get. I know I said uh, I would use epoxy, but I think I'll put this uh, 242 on there because it also is gap filling and acts as a gentle adhesive, so it'll be easier to get that out of there if I need to in the future.
So all that's left is um, an air filter to put on here. Um, I, I have to see what kind of um, um, uh, pressure drop the surgical filters that I use for um, siphoning uh, or um, aerating my wart for uh, brewing um, provide, but um, if not, I can just put in some sort of simple filter, you know, replace the, uh, replace the uh, sub, the 20 micron, I think it is, um, filters to, with something like, you know, a wad of cotton, because there's already cotton in here for um, filtering out the solder. So, whoops. So yeah, so in here is a, there's a, a filter for catching uh, the solder as it gets sucked up here. And I can probably get away with that. So yeah, um, there it is. If you've got a, um, a simple pump that you need to um, fix and it looks anything like that, I would definitely recommend trying a, uh, a bicycle inner tube for um, affecting a repair. And yeah, a little bit of hardware hacking for the evening. And thanks for watching. Bye for now.